Well, we wanted to show you another community garden, and we're here in Tulsa at the East YWCA. Today, we're visiting with Kelly Reynolds. She is the director of the YWCA Intercultural Service Center. And Kelly, thank you for showing us around your garden. Well, thank you for coming out. Now, Kelly, how did the idea of a community garden at the Y get started here? Well, a friend of mine who works for the Red Cross, uh, the American Red Cross Youth Services Program, had recently seen a garden in Houston, a community garden, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to see one up close and personal, and I'd never seen one except on episodes of Sesame Street. So I wanted to have an opportunity for our clients who are immigrants and refugees from various countries of the world to have a place to come and garden since most of them were apartment dwellers. And the Red Cross was interested in it because of the youth opportunities for volunteering that the garden would provide. So we put our heads together, wrote a grant, and started the program. Okay. Well, you actually had a nice space for the garden, but you had to do a lot of work to this spot, didn't you? Right. This was uh, an area that a long time ago used to be a parking lot, so plowing it up was probably our, our biggest barrier in starting the garden. But once we got it plowed, we added some uh, soil amendments and got the soil to a pretty decent consistency and pH level with some help from our technical advisors, a, a retired man who's an entomologist, and our OSU technical advisor, Sue Gray. And uh, we laid out the plots with some volunteers that measured 10 by 10 foot plots and then mulched the pathways. We actually dug the pathways about four inches down and then took the soil and then uh, threw it onto the, the raised beds. So mm -hmm. the plots are actually slightly raised and then used uh, wood chips donated by our electric company, PSO, to uh, make the pathways so it wouldn't get too wet. And we also had a problem with the, the, the slanting, the slope of the soil, it tended to move to the east. So uh, over time, we tried to build up and grade the soil towards mm -hmm. this end. So, and that's helped with your drainage then? Yes, there's still a little bit of a problem, so we're hoping to address that as, as years of adding mulch and soil Mm -hmm. um, and we're learning as we go along. This is the second year of this project, and we're proud of the accomplishments, but we're learning as we go and trying different things each year. Okay, now you have got uh, quite a few plots out here, and these are basically for anyone to sign up to garden with, right? Right, we have a wide variety of gardeners. Some are, are seasoned veterans, and others are just getting started in gardening, and it's the sense of community develops when the seasoned veterans help the new gardeners and give them advice. And also we have a variety of male, female, different cultures, different age groups. Uh, some, of their, some of the gardeners bring their children out here to garden. It's a wonderful introduction to, to gardening from the, for the children's benefit. That is very nice. That community is, is a very nice part of a community garden. Right. That's so. hence the name. That's right. It's very good. Um, now, do you have requirements for each plot when you give it out? What should We just ask that the gardeners keep it uh, tamed and keep, uh, keep their plants contained to their plot and not let, uh, for example, crawling crops such as cucumbers and mm -hmm. melons uh, interfere with the pathways unless they have adjoining plots where they can let that uh, also, if they have a plot along the fence line, right. they, can, uh, they can use that fence to train their, their vining crops up. We also ask that the crops be uh, legal plants, um, and um, we ask that they avoid the use of uh, very strong pesticides, mm -hmm. and that's one of the uh, benefits of having a volunteer that knows all about bugs, is they can consult him if they have a pest problem, and he can give them an alternative pest control method that they can try first. Well, that's a good idea to kind of keep a lid on something that might right. harm other crops. Exactly. So. Now, um, are people in charge of weeding and watering their own plots? People do have to maintain their own plots, but we do have a volunteer gardener that helps with the watering. We use a rain tower system, which is basically a sprinkler on a very tall tripod, mm -hmm. and we try to water on a regular basis. And we also have uh, barrels with water for individual watering, especially at the beginning of the season where people have uh, seedlings. Uh, sometimes the rain tower pressure can be really hard on those seedlings. So we use the, the rain barrel and people just water individual plants. Well, Kelly, that sounds like a good system. Um, now, if someone wanted to get a plot here, uh, how would they go about doing that? Well, we have an application process, but generally anyone who applies um, receives a plot as long as there's plots available. Right now the garden is full, but we anticipate that there might be a few gardeners that drop out 
and so there's time for them to, new gardeners to come in and plant a fall crop. Okay, now who would they contact to do that? They can reach me at the YWCA Intercultural Service Center and the telephone number there is 918-663-0377. Okay. Now, as we've been talking about the community garden, you've mentioned a lot of uh, volunteer work that's gone on. Um, is that's an important part of this garden, isn't it? Absolutely. The garden simply wouldn't be without the work of volunteers that come in and put mulch on the pathways and pull weeds, sometimes even do some planting and just help us maintain the garden. A lot of those volunteers range in age from retired people and we have quite a few youth groups that come here either through a, a church or through a high school honor society or the Red Cross Youth Services Program. So we really thrive on, on using those volunteers to help us maintain. And they would basically contact that same number then? Same number. Now you've actually got a volunteer that's done a lot of work here on a new addition to your garden. Yes, we do. We have an exceptional volunteer that has, as part of an Eagle Scout project, built uh, four raised beds that we had initially wanted at the beginning of, of starting this garden, but it was simply too much to take on. And so finally we found someone that was willing to do this, and he's put quite a few hours into it. Well, thank you so much for uh, telling us about the gardens, Kelly. And um, I think we're going to go visit with him and see how he's done this project. All right, thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge both classic and contemporary.